One of the most important tournaments of the year just finished, Norway Chess 2024. Today we're going to analyze the game that decided who the winner was. With the white pieces we have Magnus Carlsen, the highest rated chess player ever to exist, and with the black pieces we have Fabiano Caruana, an absolute monster, 2800 rating points. Let's start the game. Knight f3 was played, knight f6, pawn to c4, pawn to b6, knight c3, bishop b7, pawn to d4, pawn to e6, this is what we call the Queen's Indian defense. When you fianchetto the bishop like this, that's what we call the Queen's Indian defense. White plays pawn to a3, the Petrosian system preventing bishop b4, and you're going to notice that most of the battle here happens over the e4 square, which is very important. So not only the center in general, but the e4 square. That's why black plays knight e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, e3, more developing moves, bishop d3, fighting for the a4 square, queen takes d3, castles, castles, d6, once again, finishing development, we're getting almost into, into the middle game, pawn to b4, um, getting ready to take this bishop out, but also occupying space in the queen side, knight d7, rook d1, a5, fighting for the queen side space, bishop b2, a takes b4, a takes b4, and in this position we pretty much reach the middle game, and players are starting to think what are their going to what are their long-term plans going to be? Is it going to be a kingside attack? Is it going to be a pawn break like c5? Or is it going to be exchanging certain pieces? Well, in fact, the, this last one is Black's plan, and Black tries to exchange the rooks and try to fight for the a-file. So plays queen b8. David, that looks weird, that looks passive. Well, that's what te chess teaches you, it may maybe looks passive moving the queen on b8, but the idea is very clear, black wants to play queen b7, trade rooks, and fight for the a-file. That's why white plays queen e4, when you get to this level, and I don't know why I say that, I'm not in this level, but when, when players are playing this high level, they're just preventing what they, the, the other players want to do. So that's why it's so annoying, that's why it's so good to look at these games as well, because you learn that... Chess, chess is a two-player game and you have to avoid what your opponent wants to play. So queen e4 is doing that, and on top of that, it's multifunctional. It's preventing queen b7, and it's getting ready for queen c6, which is a very annoying move to meet as black. So d5 was played, c takes d5, and knight f6, which is already already a little bit of a uh, practical mistake, I would say. This is still equal, but the best way to play it was with queen b7, following your original plan. And the reason why this is a little bit more uh, easy to play, or easier to play, I should say, sorry, to play for black is that after something like b5, you, of course you can't take because this is hanging. b5, you play rook a5, you're gonna play rook a8, you're gonna fight for the a file, and this is more comfortable to play. But after what happened, knight f6, queen c2, e takes d5, knight e5, this is still equal, objectively, according to the engine, but who cares about what the engine says? When now white, white is getting the knight c to, to c6, black has to start thinking about, oh, this knight is getting to c6, so that's going to be a problem. So for humans, this is already a little bit annoying. Bishop d6 was played, attacking the knight, preventing, sorry, uh, defending c7. b5, cementing the structure. Now these two pawns cannot move anymore. One pawn is preventing two pawns from moving, that's pretty good. Queen e8 was played, rook takes, queen takes, rook a1, queen e8, and queen c6. We get to this position. Ideal. So we have Magnus Carlton with the white pieces. We have white slightly sli in, a, in a slightly better position. You can already tell what's going to happen. And if you don't understand what I'm what I mean right now, is that this position is slightly better for white. White might not be able to win in 10 moves or in 15 moves. It might be in 40 moves, but it's a very annoying thing to be it's a very annoying position to have with the black pieces. Why? Because white's position is just more active. This rook is in the open file, this knight is in the center, this queen is pretty deep in black's position, and if you look at black's pieces in comparison, they're 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 not doing very well. This bishop is probably the, the, the most active minor piece, but this knight is not targeting too much. Um black is already a little bit struggling. Queen e7 was played, rook a7, uh invading the seventh rank h5 giving some air or space to the king, h3 with the same idea, rook d8, and queen c1. So, out of white's pieces, all of these are very active, the knight, the rook, and the queen. The only one that is not doing much is the bishop. So black, sorry, so white thinks, I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna play bishop a3 in this position. They didn't play bishop a3 in this position because that would be sacrificing a pawn, which is still fine for white after bishop b2, but it's not necessary. So knight c6 first, which is what happened in the game, rook e8, bishop a3, and now white is arguing two things. White is saying, I'm going to dev I'm going to get to trade this bishop on b2, which was doing nothing, for your bishop, which, which was defending c7. So on top of, of trading the bishop that was doing nothing for white, you're going to get to attack c7 better. 
So bishop a3 happened. Very good move. Knight e4, bishop takes d6, queen takes d6, and um, white is slightly better after this knight e5 move. So c7 is something you have to defend eternally for, for from, from black's perspective, and th that's of course not ideal. Rook c8 happened. There's not much you can do. And in this position, something very weird happened. So if you have this, this position that has the white pieces, you have a slight advantage, as I said. You're probably going to, to not win this right away, but it's definitely something that you're going to work. If you improve your position little by little, it's very difficult for black to hold. But unlike Magnus, Magnus played f3. And this is a mistake. It's a little bit of... Okay, it's, def it's still fine, it's not a big blunder, but it's a little bit of a mistake. Because after knight g3, this king is a little bit unsafe, and you already, already have to worry about knight e2 moves. And you play simply a king h2, which is not so bad, you walk into this diagonal where the, your opponent's queen is, and that's not ideal either. For instance, if you play something like h, black is going to play something like h4, if you play soft moves, you're already in trouble after knight d3, knight f1, and e3 is hanging, right? So that's not ideal. Black, after knight, sorry, knight g3, queen a1 was played as white, uh, f6 was played, knight d3, and once again, we reach this position, which is pretty critical. So players are starting to feel the pressure. There's a little bit of nerves kicking in. And black has been playing a little bit defensive. It's very difficult to switch from defensive to attacking. And Fabi plays h4, which is a mistake. Now, why is this a mistake? Or it's an inaccuracy, I should say. Why is this an inaccuracy, David? Well, there's nothing wrong with h4. It's cementing the knight. It's protecting the knight. There's nothing wrong. The only problem with this move is that there was a better one. And... In, in order to, to get a slightly better position as black, you should have found rook e8. Which I'm guessing Fabi rejected because of rook a8, but it turns out that this is bad news for white after queen e7. Who is going to protect this pawn? King f2, of course, is not working to this. If, 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 if you trade queen takes e2, king f2, you have knight f5, and you're in trouble as well. So... This this was the 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 only and the first the first I, the first time Black could have gotten a slightly better position, but unfortunately Fabi didn't find it. Fabi played h4 as I said. King f2 happened. King h7. Queen b1. Getting ready all of getting ready getting sorry getting discovered checks ready. Rook e8 happened. Queen c2. Knight f4 was a little bit better because of the king g8 queen g6. Black has to wait with rook d8. Um. But queen c2 happened, absolutely fine. Rook e7. Once again, knight f4 was a little bit better, forcing f5. But but white played knight e5, which is by no means... Um, I mean, this is still very good practical choice. Um, the only problem is that Fabi managed to find the, the only draw, drawing move, which is knight e4. They're very strong. f takes e4 happened. f takes e5. e takes d5. Once again, Fabi finds e4, the only way to draw. But the problem for Fabi is that... Well, for instance, if you try to be materialistic here and, and protect the pawn, you're going to lose immediately. Just, just as a disclaimer. King g1 happened, queen takes d5. And the problem for Fabi is that after all this transformation, you reach this queen endgame, but you have to be very precise. In fact, after queen f4, there's only one move that holds the draw in this position, and that's queen d3. David, why is this a draw? Well, black is going to push this pawn and queen with check, which is very important. What happened in the game is queen b b1 check, king h2, and now if you play queen d3, this is no longer a draw. And this is amazing, and I... I mean, Fabi wouldn't have found it, Magnus wouldn't have found it, even more so if, if they're playing on the clock with, with a couple of seconds left. It turns out that this is, an, this is a winning endgame for white, because after all these forcing moves, eventually black is going to queen, but it's not check anymore. The king is on h2 because of the check you gave a couple of moves ago, and you're going to get this four queen endgame where black has to trade one of the queens, because this black king is a little bit more exposed, so it makes sense. And you get this endgame where it's winning for white, objectively. Because of this e4, e4 pawn, it's too weak. So you're going to lose it eventually, and you're going to lose the game. Of course, that's very difficult to spot. You would expect that black had some perpetual, maybe, or some way to draw. But there's no. And after what happened, queen b1, king h2, queen d3 is not working anymore. Black tried b5, but after this uh d5 it's too quick white is too quick the the d pawn is, is 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 going to promote first queen d3 was tried but after check 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 queen e7 eventually happened and that supports the pawn in this position fabi resigned and magnus didn't secure a win yet he still depended on the result of another game but eventually won norway chess very good game 
Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and have a nice day.